there was no massacre in Githurai. Mr. President. There was one person who was shot by the police. Let me, yeah, let me, let yeah, me answer. Yeah. So, an organization that is as reckless as to say there was a massacre when there was none, now is telling us there are 24, the police are saying 19. We will, we will find out where the numbers are. Who was shot by the police after they overpowered the police and took the bullet and, and took the gun from the police and used it against innocent citizens. I cannot confirm to you that this is not the man that shot the child. But investigations are going on, and we will get to the bottom of it. Mr. President, I, I am telling the mother of this young person yeah. that I, as president, will make sure that finally I will give her an explanation of what really happened and make sure that we bring this to a situation where, like her uh, like myself who have children, she too, can be, her child can be accounted for. Mr. President, the Kenya National Commission on Human Rights is the one that has accounted for 24 bodies lying in morgues. And those bodies, the records show that these people either died in hospital and while undergoing treatment for gunshot wounds, or they ended up in the morgue in the last two weeks with gunshot wounds, 24. This 24, Mr. President, are you saying that the security agencies have told you that these 24 were criminals, that these 24 were armed, they were posing a danger to the police officers, and that is what necessitated the police to use live bullets on them? Because the circumstances for the police officer to use a live bullet is clear, even in their own code of operations. It is when the life of that police officer is in danger or when somebody else's life is clearly in danger and the person who's endangering that person is armed. Were the 24 armed? Did they pose a danger, a direct threat to the police? Two things. The same Kenya Human Rights Commission. Kenya National Commission. Kenya Human National Commission. The government agency. Yeah, the government agency. Yes. Told the nation that there was a massacre in Githurai and 20 people were killed in Kithurai. Were 20 people killed in Kithurai, really? The Kenya National Commission on Human Rights does not have records of 20 people killed no, in No, but, but that's, that's their statement. It is, it is a statement that is public, you know? So the same Kenya Human Rights, uh, Kenya Commission, uh, Human Rights, National, National, Commission. Hum, uh, National Human Rights Commission told the country a blatant fake news falsehood. That yes. Are there you was saying this, a massacre this 24 in, is um, also... Let me, let me, you ask me a question. Allow me to answer. Yes. They, they to, that's what they told the country. So an organization that can tell the country without verifying that there was a massacre in Kidurai. In fact, BBC, on that account, went to investigate in Kidurai. And of course, you know, you have read, BBC has said... There was no massacre in Githurai. Mr. President. There was one person who was shot by the police. Let me, yeah, let me, let yeah, me answer. Yeah. So, an organization that is as reckless as to say there was a massacre when there was none, now is telling us there are 24, the police are saying 19. We will, we will find out where the numbers are. Okay. But that is the credibility okay. of the organization okay. Mr. that you are telling. Mr. Mr. President, that, that may let, well be. Let, let, me, let me also... May, my, my just question, on Mr. that issue, the death was, so that Larry can follow up. The people you who may, died, yeah, that's where I'm coming. were they a danger that, that's to the where, police? That's where I'm coming. Are they the criminals that you're talking about? Let me tell you two things. There will be an investigation on how these 19 Kenyans died. There will be a clarity, an explanation for each and every one of them. I have told you one situation where somebody accosted the police, took over the firearm, started to shoot at people, endangering the lives of many other Kenyans. He was shot by the police. There is a situation in parliament. How did the invaders in parliament? They invaded parliament and went straight for the armory at the Moselia. They went straight at the armory at the Sergeant Atom's office. Those are the investigations that 
we will get into and a proper explanation will be given to the country. Are Mr. weapons lost? What I am saying... Are the weapons, are the, are the armories and the mausoleum and inside parliament? That, that, are they that, is why, that is why there will be an investigation Mid of how these armories were attacked and were there, how did these people know that there was an armory in parliament? M Mr. President, you may, you may not believe the Kenya National Commission on Human Rights, but surely you would believe your own deputy who has said there's been a return to extrajudicial killings and abductions contrary to what you and him promised the people of Kenya. Let me tell you, I am the president and I speak for the government of Kenya, right? And so this is, my, this is what I'm telling you. I made three commitments that I will make sure the police in, is independent. And I did that on my first day in office. Number two, I said there will be no extrajudicial killing in Kenya. I have kept my, my, my promise. Number three, I have told you that if there is any arrest by the police, that does not amount to an abduction in my very honest uh, Let's pause for a moment, uh, Mr. President, and I just want us to go to that video over there, which will play on air, and uh, let's post and watch it together, Your Excellency. Let's watch this video. Sell them to the people of Kenya. There are enough intelligent people in Kenya to differentiate what is good from what is better and what is best. And why let their but these people don't understand the damage they are doing to the people and the economy of Kenya. All right. All right. Yeah, yes, the, vi the video in uh, contention here is, was recorded earlier today. Yes. That of former MP Alfred Keter being abducted in broad daylight. Mr. President, before you even talk about the entire incident, the children were screaming, and the sound that we believe belongs to the wife was also heard, screaming in distress. How does that make you feel? Three things. I have told you, I made a deliberate decision to make sure that the police operate independently. That's number one. Number two. I have told you, if the police summon Linus Kaikai Kai, and Linus Kaikai Kai refuses to go to the police, are the police not entitled to come and look for you? When the police come to arrest you after they have summoned you and you didn't show up, is that an abduction? So let's have this as a confirmation. That no, I'm just MP, asking you. Let's have this as a confirmation, Your Excellency, that Alfred Keter was summoned by police. He refused to uh, respond to the summons. The police have issued a summons. statement. I, I would suggest, instead of uh, us having a back and forth, the police have released a statement. Can you check what the police, the police have released, the statement? And you still have not answered my question. Which the wife and children screaming that way. I mean, how do you feel, your, your Excellency? I mean, my friend, every child, every mother feels the same when their parent is under attack. I mean, th the, that, is, it, that, that is what it is. But let me ask you, what about the children? What about the children of those who have lost their lives because of the criminality of others. Don't they feel the same? So we, we just need to be a country of the rule of law. Impunity cuts both ways. Those who respect the law must be protected by the law. Those who do not respect the law must face the full force of the law. That, that's how it operates. That's how we will have a society. Uh, here is the impression. same way, yeah. we must condemn excessive use of police powers, here but we must equally 
deal firmly and decisively with criminals who put the lives of other Kenyans in danger, destroy property of hard-earned earnings. There are many people, liners, in this, in this demonstration that have lost livelihoods, that today their children are crying. Today their wives are in tears because they don't know how to face tomorrow. Mr. President, do their you... businesses have been wiped out. Yeah. Their incomes have been destroyed. But I have just told you 2.4 billion shillings worth I, of I business you, has been destroyed. You, and today, as I talk to you this evening, there are families who have tears. There are families who do not know how to face tomorrow. And, and, and I've asked you very specifically, President, how do you feel about those tears, especially I mean, it, those it's, who it's, have been it's, killed it's horrible. by police bullets? It is horrible. It is horrible. When you find a situation where people are grieving, whether they are grieving because their parents have been arrested or they are grieving because their hard-earned earnings of many years, money is there. I have, I have on my phone people who are saying, I borrowed money. My whole loan has been wiped out. My whole barbershop has been destroyed. My whole hardware has been looted and burnt. And they are in tears. So I must equally work with the police to protect all these citizens. And it, and it cuts both ways, uh, Linus. It cuts both ways. Using the rule of law. Absolutely. Let me take you to just step by Absolutely. step. Absolutely. The, the rule of law says mm -hmm. the rule of law requires the police to investigate a matter, to when they have sufficient evidence, present that to the ODPP. The director of public prosecutions takes people who are culpable to court. That's the journey in the rule of law, Mr. President. Mm -hmm. In the case of 39 people who have been abducted, and the abduction here, we're using it deliberately because of the manner in which the people have been arrested, like we've seen in the case of Alfred Kater, others who've been picked up from their houses in the middle of the night, and they are held in communicado for more than 24 hours outside of what the, the rule of law says. And then they are not taken to court, so they are not charged with anything. That is outside of the rule of law. So in one instance here we are saying we are not following the rule of law. In the second instance, Mr. President, you have people who were unarmed, like in the case of Rex, who was shot in the middle of the night, unarmed, who have been shot by police and they've ended up dead. 24 of them, you say 19. That again is extrajudicial because there is no justification that has been produced to show that there was justification for the police to use the excessive force. So basically we are showing examples where the rule of law, which you promised to uphold, which you also set and said, this is what the police has been doing. And you said, Mr. President, um, as, as you took office, that the problems with the police service also are going to the top, the leadership of the police service. And you promised the people of Kenya that you're going to hold the police to account outside of the rule of law and accountability, which comes to your desk. Are you holding the police accountable for 39 people abducted, for 24 people killed, for 627 people arrested and not charged, for 431 people injured by live bullets, rubber bullets, tear gas canisters, police batons? Uh, Latif. As I have told you, we must operate within the parameters of the rule of law. And I agree with you. The police must never act outside the framework of the rule of law. They must do that which only the Constitution and the law allows them to do. And it is very clear that any operation of the police outside the parameters of the law, the police will be held to account. Whether it is uh, holding citizens beyond the stipulated time, but I must be thoroughly clear to you, 
when police arrest somebody, there is a constitutional timeline which they are allowed by the law to hold that person. 24 hours. That does not amount to an abduction. 24 hours. In my, in my opinion. A case in point is what has just been said here about uh, what happened earlier today. And you guys clearly said in this uh, uh, conference that it was an abduction. I mean, it, it's just clear now that it is not an abduction. They are not this, 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 is, this, is, this, is, this is an arrest. And the police have come forward to say this is the situation. We have arrested uh, this person. And it is, it is just good for us to all of us follow the law. And, and I agree with you. The police must act within the law. But let me ask you one question uh, also, Latif. I have never, in this conversation, which is now 20 minutes in, are you guys bothered about the fact that parliament was burnt? Are you guys concerned that millions of businesses, of Kenyans, hardworking Kenyans, we, we are, yes. were, were destroyed. How do you feel? But it all happened. Yeah, how do you feel? It, how and it all happened under your watch, Mr. President. No, but that, this, this is at the end of the day, day. This is why we are saying you sort we, keep must, we must be even. You know, we must be even. The police have a difficult job. They have to make sure the peaceful demonstrators are protected. But they also must make sure that the criminals, and, I, and when you say criminals, you know, when I said the other day criminals, Many people took offense that I was calling the demonstrators uh, criminals. That's not... Families of the dead, your that, that is not... That, that's a lot of offense. Family of Rex. Rex was killed in a week when the protesters were very peaceful. The first week of this protest were peaceful. We saw protesters carrying... carrying uh, Flackards. And water bottles. Just water bottles. My, my <laughs> Rex was killed on his way out of work. Let me, let me, let me tell you. How do you feel? You. I mean, let me, let me tell you. when they hear let me, you let say me. criminals? I mean... Are you, are you telling me Rex is the one who broke, uh, who burned parliament? But Rex died without breaking no, in. No, I'm just telling you. He died. You know, Rex died there are, died there are criminals yeah. who infiltrated and caused mayhem. And in fact, some of the criminals are actually harmed. They actually harmed the peaceful protesters. Many of the peaceful protesters, they lost phones. They were attacked. In fact, some of the uh, peaceful protesters were attacked by criminals, including a clear example of the one I have, I have, I have explained to you, that they overpowered the police, took the gun from the police, and started shooting innocent people. So we must deal with this situation globally. M Mr. President. I feel for Rex and the mother. This should not happen to any child in Kenya, especially when they are engaged in a peaceful demonstration. Mr. President, the, the concern I've heard from the young people, because I've been speaking to a lot of them, and they say they haven't heard you. In the two statements, actually there are more now because you have spoken in other settings, apart from the two addresses you gave. They haven't heard you address them. They haven't heard you talk to these parents. They haven't heard you acknowledge that there were people who were shot by police in circumstances that did not warrant that. Are you saying you haven't seen anything that bothers you about how police responded to these protests? I am very, and I have, I, and, I, and in my first statement, I clearly said that innocent lives were lost. In my second statement, I said the same. There were innocent lives lost. But also equally, as a person who is responsible, I must think about 